So I camped at uh, Princess Falls last night, uh, 22 miles for the day. I uh, didn't even know about this place. I was about to set up camp uh, because I ran out of daylight and ran into a trail runner. I saw his headlight bobbing on the trail before I ever saw him, but... Uh, he finally got to where I was at, about to set up camp, and he was like, oh no man, you need to, uh, let me give you a hookup of a really great camp spot. And he told me about it, and it was like a half a mile down the trail. So uh, I had to break out my headlamp and night hike to get here. Couldn't even see the place, but now that it's daylight, um, pretty cool place. I'm sure it'd be a lot better if there was more water, but uh, that's the sound I got to listen to pretty much all night. A 10 plus for the coolness factor, only about a 3 for the uh, sound sleep. So, uh, that uh, 22 miles, by the way, was GPS miles. I looked at the book last night, and it was somewhere around 15 or 16 actual trail miles. So that's not too bad, considering I didn't start until 10.30. It's uh, 7.46 now. I uh, already had my cold breakfast. I'm going to skip the coffee and uh, pack up and hit the trail. So a buddy of mine asked me how I filter water when I'm on the trail, and I thought I would go ahead and uh, explain that. I use a Sawyer filter. Sorry for the close-up, but I got to zoom in on the bag backpack in order to see it. I use a Sawyer squeeze. On shorter hikes, I use the Sawyer Mini. They're both the same concept, um, and along with a smart water bottle to collect the water. So I've already got a liter collected. And let me show you how I filter this. This is the uh, smart bottle, smart water bottle. It basically has a liter of creek water in it. Inside the backpack I have a water bladder. Basically put the filter in there and squeeze the bottle. Then you have to loosen.
One last look before I leave. That uh, trash that's over there in that fire pit is not by me. I always pack mine out. So while night hiking to get to Princess Falls last night, it was a... Uh, I actually ended up on the other side of the river because somewhere downstream my headlamp hit a trail marker on the other side of the river when you were supposed to actually come up this side on the trail to get to this bridge but because I was night hiking and the blaze was reflective I ended up on that side and I got confused for a minute because there's another blaze that comes this direction and brings you to the bridge and I was like that don't make sense so I started looking at the official trail guide and it had mentioned this bridge um, so intuition told me to come back which I did and then I was able to figure out where Princess Arch was because there's a sign right here. Uh, Lick Creek, actually, it's a, there's a sign that's on further back up there. I don't feel like walking, but. So there was a sign that said Princess Arch, two tenths of a mile that way. And uh, I was back on track. Um, so one of the things, hiker tip, gotta be careful when night hiking that you don't uh, get confused because of other blazes um, that, that can set you off track. Same trail, just farther ahead. And let me actually show you where that was at because it's just a little ways. And uh, excuse the camera shakiness, it's kind of hard to do this because when I get there, it'll also show you that there's another marker on the other side. Um, actually, I come up this trail right here so I crossed right down there and you won't be able to see it but so what happened was I got to the top of this and I was like what the hell's going on why is there a blaze there and another one right up there and my headlamp wasn't bright enough to see that bridge over there but I could see the trail going in that direction so I was like I'll just go ahead and go there and see what happens and it took me to the bridge which then correlated with the official trail guide alright so this goes out to one of my YouTube subscribers um, who asked me do I really need trekking poles on the trail and the answer is yes um, it helps provide forward momentum to the body with minimal effort, just the weight of the arms alone. And uh, that helps a lot. So the correct way you put these on, I hope this turns out on the camera, is normally the wrist goes up through the strap and then you hold it like this. The problem is I have really big wrists. Um, and I usually don't do it that way, but there is a problem. So let's say you're holding them like this. You basically want the angle of the pole to be backwards like this. And then you want to just let the weight of your arm push forward while this one is coming forward, your right leg. So the weight of your left arm moves the body forward as the right leg comes forward. And then when you step, the other one would be the one pushing. So it's opposite of whichever leg. And let me go over, so you, generally when you're walking on level ground or slightly uphill or slightly downhill, the angle of the pole is about like this. And 
you never really come past about this point when you move the pole. I, I generally try to keep it about center line on my leg. So holding it like this, if you fall, the trekking pole falls clear of the hand and minimizes injury. Um, going back to, I said I generally don't hold it that way because my wrists are so big. And you can see I'm even having trouble getting it out of the wrist strap. I usually hold it like this. So my four fingers through the strap and then my thumb wrapped around it. If I fall though, what happens is you fall on the pole like this and generally that breaks the thumb because you're right there, the, the handle crosses that critical junction of the hand where the thumb is at. So if you can do it the correct way, it's better. If not, just be aware that if you fall, your hand is gonna go flat and the trekking pole is gonna be cut between your thumb and first finger and you're likely going to break your thumb. Okay, so I actually went off the trail, uh, not a lot, but 30 feet or so in order to get this. This is the Cumberland River, which nearly looks like a wasteland. The water is so low. As far as you can see, if you go by those rocks over there, I'm gonna guess this river is down 12 feet or better. You can tell that normally these rocks would be covered in water. You can see over there the water lines on that rock. And that's a massive boulder I'm guessing at least 20 feet tall or taller so I don't really know what the water level should be but it is way down This is at uh, Cotton Patch Creek, and since they said to use caution, we ought to video this just to see how much caution is needed. So uh, give me a minute to get the camera strap around my wrist in case I drop the camera by chance. Um, both trekking poles strapped to the other hand just in case. I don't drop them. And let's go see. I'm guessing it's probably not too crazy. And that's kind of cool down there. Get a view of this area. Um, if the little uh, handrail wasn't there, I could see where this might be dangerous, but. I'm going to go up it just like that. Oh, yeah, if you were to fall here, that would be bad. 
all right some caution is necessary however I'm gonna tell you that the bridge leans slightly to the right and uh, short of falling right here where you step off I don't think you'd ever have a problem So, uh, originally I was supposed to do this hike last year. I had it scheduled for later in the year, more toward the end of October. And uh, a couple of things happened that made me have to postpone it to this year. Um, one, the closing of my house and getting moved in. Um, and I was already past the lease date of my apartment. Um, they kind of knew the situation um, and basically gave me three weeks of rent for free matter of fact um, they said some kind of fresh scat right there looks more like human than it does bear but uh, they said that since I had rented the apartment for for seven years and never was late on a payment that even though my lease was up they wasn't going to make me pay the non prorated non lease fee and then they congratulated me on buying a house and told me not to worry about paying for three weeks of rent at all because it would probably take them a month or two to get into the apartment in order to clean it out and uh, refurbish it the uh, all the apartments went through renovations while I was there except for mine and they said mine was the only one that hadn't been done yet. So uh, anyways, another thing that happened was I, when I scheduled it last year, I didn't realize that I scheduled it after the daylight savings time change that occurs every fall. And the amount of daylight that was available by the time that I did get moved into the house was not sufficient enough to be able to complete the hike um, unless I set about a four mile an hour pace and in rugged terrain that probably would not have been ideal so this year I scheduled it earlier in the year the last week of September first two weeks of October um, I have so it gets daylight around 7, 7.15, and then it gets dark around 7.30, so take out for time to wake up, get motivated, get things packed up. I've got roughly 12 hours of hiking time, give or take. Um, however, I had to take four zero days after, after my fifth day due to a leg injury. And now I have to make up those miles over the next few days and reevaluate whether or not I'm going to be able to complete this hike before I have to go back to work. Um, I don't mind doing night hiking, but I'd really rather not do night hiking in terrain that I'm not familiar with. But if I have a long day of like road miles and the sun's out where I don't have to use my headlamp, I may go ahead and night hike in the road sections. Um, again, we'll ha I'll have to evaluate where I'm at when I get there. So, yesterday's uh, hiking log I didn't do. I'll go ahead and do that now. So I started at Peter Mountain Trailhead and ended up at Princess Falls. GPS miles was a little over 22 actual trail miles I think was only 15 and some change uh, I'll need to validate that when I edit this video um, I've been on the trail since about 830 so about an hour and a half I've done uh, three and a third GPS miles which is about probably two two and a quarter trail miles <laughs> 
I'm kind of getting pretty good at estimating now. So, uh, no issues. I had a, about a 50-50 mix of road miles, whether that's forest road or actual road and trail miles. Uh, a lot of it was downhill. Today, a lot of it seems to be level, uh, downhill with some uphills, but it's not been nothing drastic. So, uh, hopefully I can get another good day in. My legs feel fine. They're not sore. Uh, didn't get much sleep last night. Uh, the coolness factor of the waterfall, definitely a 10 plus. The sound sleep, not very good. Um, also because I got there late to the camp at Princess Falls, I uh, couldn't really find a place to ha hang my food. So basically all my food was sitting under my hammock for any bear to come along and forage on me or the food. Luckily it didn't happen. Sometimes you take a risk, that's one of them. I generally always hang my food when I'm in bear country, but I haven't really seen any scat once I got, once I went across the Yamacraw Bridge, the only scat that I've seen was I just showed you back there on that video. And that didn't look like bear poop. Uh, bear poop this time of year usually has a lot of uh, acorns and uh, buckeyes and other kinds of nuts because there's not a lot of fruit available on the trail this time of year. Uh, and that didn't have any of that stuff. So almost looks like a human just dropped trowel and dumped a load right there in the middle of the trail. But let me go ahead and shut this off because I'm burning up battery. I forgot uh, one thing in addition to yesterday's trail log. I forded Rock Creek with my tennis shoes on because I didn't want to waste any time getting across it and it didn't look like it was very deep. It was maybe a little more than ankle deep where I crossed that. So my shoes and socks got wet and they're actually still wet today even though I slept with my socks off hanging up under the tarp to try to air dry. They didn't dry any. I uh, wasn't even going to go over to this cotton patch shelter. Obviously it's only 10:13 in the morning. But I looked on the official trail guide and it says an open air privy and it's only 130 feet. So I'm gonna go check this out and uh, pot potentially take care of uh, my thing. <laughs> you know, do the number two, take a dump. You uh. Anytime, anytime you have the ability to not shit in the woods, take advantage of it. Is that our open air privy? Wow. I don't know, I think I'd rather just shit in the woods. Yeah. I believe that's it. But I think I'm just gonna keep shitting in the woods. But let's go ahead and take a look at the shelter area. <laughs> open air, open air privy. <laughs> Maybe there's another one up here. Maybe that's a clean out. So, uh, the Appalachian Trail is uh, known for their shelters. There's only a few on the Chitauri Trace. Uh, got a fire pit typical typical shelter uh, unfortunately I don't have any kind of a uh, sleeping pad wouldn't do me any good but uh, I might actually be able to jerry rig some sort of a uh, hammock hang inside Maybe diagonal from, that's exactly what I could do. I could do diagonal from the uh, one wall to the other because those joists are open on both sides. So that's what I would do. However, I'm gonna skip using the privy. Not much difference than shitting in the woods. 
Matter of fact, no sides on it, you would be shitting in the woods. So, I'll just keep digging cat holes and shitting in the woods then. Alright, bye. So uh, I had stopped. So I had stopped to get my bearings and uh, determined I was at 36.96 in the official through hiker guide. That doesn't account for the uh, 49, 50 miles um, of the reroute. But um, it just so happened I stopped, and the note said, once I realized where I was at, old cemetery on the left. And uh, you can't read any of the stones. They are obviously extremely old. No dates. Uh, there's an inscription on there, but you can't read it. There's a couple of other stones. It looks like there's uh, one here with a flower on it even. It looks like there's another one over there. And there. There's another one up there, it looks like. Um, there's a couple more. So there's one there it's actually been broken off one there there's a stone here with some rocks over it there's another stone here with some rocks around it there's another stone here with some rocks um, there's some sort of inscription on there but I can't tell what it is it's so worn uh, I'm not really sure I'll do some research on this Uh, I believe this is called, hopefully it says on the sign up here, it's basically a uh, camping area, looks like they got bear container, a uh, loom fort or something like that, a couple fire pits, privy up here. Uh, I uh, took a small break back here for only 10 minutes or so. Uh, this privy looks a lot better than the last privy. Oh my gosh, there's a trash can. I finally get rid of all this trash I've been packing in my pocket, which includes toiletries, that sort of thing. So uh, let me go ahead and shut this off. I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, housekeeping here and then we'll Probably stop and use that bathroom too.
Okay, the uh, official trail guide says uh, once you pass the Yahoo Falls first trail day use area, it goes to the right that you come to a bridge and Yahoo Falls is on the right. So uh, there is a uh, Yahoo Falls. dry as a bone sadly like everything else I was actually looking forward to seeing that so uh, sad So just now there was a uh, rock fracture or something over in the river. Like it sounded like the whole mountainside come down. It was on the other bank. And you could hear the waves hitting this other bank. Um, it literally scared the shit out of me. So much so I even marked on my Garmin 62SC rock fracture in case anybody gets hurt or something. Um, or if somebody wants to know when it was, it was at about uh, 1.15 p.m. on October 4th. This is a massive rock shelter. And it looks like the trail goes right through it. So we'll bring you along. Wow. This is crazy. So it's about uh, 415 GPS miles 1436 I'm starting to wear down uh, I've got uh, a couple options I can either stop at the church which is about a mile and a half away or so and camp there for the night or I could uh, go a couple more miles and there's supposed to be more campsites so uh, I haven't decided yet. I'm kind of feeling beat today. Although I was feeling good this morning and got good miles for the first half. I don't remember where it was, but at some point in time, uh, I just got really wore down. And uh, it's been slow since. So here's some more cool stuff coming up, it looks like. Massive rock shelter. Looks like it goes all the way around. Let's go ahead and leave this on. Oh. 
Oh, wow. And it goes inside too, so probably going to get dark. I'm not sure the camera will adjust that far. Wow. This is the kind of stuff you come out here for. All of the cool shit. Uh. Uh, one GPS single signal out. I'm sure the other one is too. Yeah, I'm thinking as tired as I am, I may uh, turn in early tonight at the church so I can get a really good dinner. And uh, don't think there'll be any hell raising at the church, so uh, I should be able to get some rest. Unlike the uh, waterfall, uh, Princess Falls, that was pretty rough sleeping there, even though it was cool. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this camera off. Looks like we're past all the coolness get past this getting into some technical areas that requires me to uh, stay focused This is a section you gotta watch out for dogs. The uh, small ones just bark a lot and the big one will run up to you and don't bark at all. Sometimes you just got to make do on the water situation. So this is my camp for this, what would be the seventh night on the trail, 1932 GPS miles. Um, I got me a little fire going here. I've got me a bear bag hung over there. Can't see it because there's no light. As far as actual mileage, I made it, uh, Somewhere, sorry, I was checking on. I made it somewhere around eleven thousand 
to get out my official guide book. Give me just a minute. Stay in here and watch the fire while I'm looking. I made it somewhere around 47.57 in the book. I'd have to correlate that to uh, actual miles. And I'll have to correlate distance from where I started to today. I'm about out of daylight. I'm sore. I made it farther than I intended to, though. By a couple miles. So I got a lot of stuff that needs charged tonight. I'm calling it a night.